In today's lesson, we'll be learning how to convert standard form to factored form with a focus on decomposition. In a previous lesson, we learned that factored form can be changed to standard form using expanding, and standard form can be changed back to factored form using factoring. Decomposition is just a type of factoring. In today's example, we'll be changing standard form back to factored form using factoring and we'll be using decomposition. You can use decomposition when a is not equal to one. What exactly does that mean? Well, a does not equal to one. It's actually equal to four, which means we can use decomposition here. Let's start by looking at a c. What exactly does a c mean? Well, a is 4, so let's write that down over here, and c is positive 6, so let's write that down over here as well. This looks like 46, but there's actually a hidden multiplication sign in between these two numbers. So 4 multiplied by 6 gives us 24. Next, let's take a look at b. Well, B is actually negative 11. Let's write that down over here. At this point, we want to find two numbers that multiply to give us positive 24, but the same two numbers must add up to give us negative 11. Using guess and check is a good strategy here. Let's start with the numbers 3 and 8. 3 multiplied by 8 gives us 24. So that definitely works. However, 3 plus 8 gives us positive 11. So that doesn't work. Let's use something similar. Let's use negative 3 and negative 8 instead. Well, negative 3 multiplied by negative 8 gives us positive 24. So that works. And negative 3 plus negative 8 gives us negative 11. So that works as well. If you remember, this process is called decomposition. It is called decomposition because this center term, negative 11x, is going to be decomposed. What that means is we're going to break it down into smaller pieces. I'm going to break it down into negative 3x and negative 8x. I got the negative 3 from over here and the negative 8 from over here. Everything else is going to stay the same. The y is going to stay the same. The equal sign stays the same. The 4x to the power of 2 stays the same. And the positive 6 over here stays the same as well. As you can see, we've decomposed this center term negative 11x into negative 8x and negative 3x. You'll notice that they've switched places. The order of these two terms doesn't actually matter. We're going to have to break down these four terms into smaller groups, so I'm going to group them like so. I only want you to focus on these two terms right now. We'll begin by finding the greatest common factor of the coefficients. So the greatest common factor of 4 and 8 is 4. Next, we want to look for a common variable with the lowest exponent. Both these terms contain the variable of x, and the lowest exponent is 1. There's a hidden exponent of 1. So I can rewrite this as x to the power of 1. So the combined common factor is 4x to the power of 1. I'm going to write 4x to the power of 1 over here. And in brackets, I'm going to write what I had originally, which was 4x to the power of 2 and negative 8x. Everything inside the bracket is going to get divided by 4x to the power of 1. The 4x to the power of 1 in front of the brackets is going to stay the same. The brackets themselves are going to stay the same. And now we're going to have to use the quotient rule since we have terms being divided by other terms. Coefficients are going to get divided, so 4 divided by 4 gives us 1. Next, bases, 
stay the same. So that variable of x is going to stay the same. And last, exponents get subtracted. So 2 subtract 1 gives us 1. Let's repeat the same process. So coefficients get divided. Negative 8 divided by 4 gives us negative 2. Next, bases stay the same. So that variable of x is going to stay the same. And finally, exponents are going to get subtracted. So there is a hidden one over here, subtracted by 1. And that is going to give us 0. We can definitely clean this up. So let's remove this exponent of 1, this exponent of 1, and this coefficient of 1. We can also remove x to the power of 0. So that kind of disappears. We're going to repeat the same process with these two terms over here. First, we want to find the greatest common factor of the coefficients. So we have 3 and 6. The greatest common factor of 3 and 6 happens to be 3. Next, we want to find a common variable with the lowest exponent. This term has a variable of x. This term doesn't. So they don't have a common variable. So I'm just going to strike that through. Therefore, the combined common factor is just 3. I'm going to write that 3 right over here. Now, there's something a little bit different. As you can see, there was a negative sign in front of it, so we do have to put it in front of the 3. I'm going to put brackets around what I originally had. So it was negative 3x plus 6. Don't forget, what we originally had was negative 3x. So you do have to put negative 3x over here. Now, everything inside the bracket is going to get divided by negative 3. The negative 3 in front of the bracket is going to stay the same, while I'm going to write the brackets in for now. Because I'm dividing terms, that means I'm going to be using the quotient rule. Coefficients get divided. So negative 3 divided by negative 3 gives us positive 1. Bases stay the same. So that variable of x stays the same. And exponents get subtracted. So I have a hidden 1 over here, and I have no exponent over there. So a hidden 1 subtract nothing is just 1. And last, I'm going to repeat the process. So coefficients are going to get divided. So positive 6 divided by negative 3 gives us negative 2. And we can definitely clean this up. I'm going to remove this exponent of 1 and this coefficient of 1. At this point, I want you to think of everything highlighted in yellow as belonging to one group and everything highlighted in orange belonging to another group. Take a close look at these two groups. What do they have in common? You'll notice that x minus 2 in brackets is common to both these two groups. So this y equals is going to stay the same. I'm going to place that x minus 2 in brackets over here. And then this leftover 4x and negative 3 are going to go together in their own brackets. In conclusion, we've just converted standard form to factored form using decomposition.